let's start with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, the guy who mainstream media just recently was like, ah, he might have a chance after all. I thought he was going to fail. In fact, I saw a video with, um, I forget who it was then. It was one of the other shows where they were, uh, this one guy was like, you know, I always knew Bernie Sanders was going to stay for the whole year. And then they have a clip of him from a year ago. Bernie Sanders campaign is going to fall apart immediately. <laughs> anyway. So uh, one thing that's very natural to do in a uh, American democratic primary system is to tell your people in the primary, hey, I'm going to do all these things for you. Uh, ha ha. I promise I'll do them. Wink. And then during the uh, general election go, OK, I remember I said I do those things for you. I have all these other people that I also want to do things for. And maybe you aren't as important as you were when I was running in the primary, and this is the primary swing that you try and grab all the electorates you can to win the nomination, and then, of course, you lie to them and switch to what you were actually going to do in the uh, general election. So Bernie Sanders has said, eh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And he said he has no plans to abandon his effective grassroots fundraising model and begin accepting billionaire cash if he makes it to the general election against President Donald Trump, the Vermont senator's campaign manager said on Thursday. So this is something that Sanders has said continuously for, well, since he's run into office. It's, it's almost like it's less about how much money his campaign is taking in and more about the principle of taking small dollar donations, that that is going further, you know, in terms of, uh, swaying the minds of voters and, and showing people that he's not corrupted than having extra money from a super PAC would, would be. And it shows that in this day and time in a way that hasn't been true seemingly for a, a very long time, but it is now, Sanders is winning in terms of donations. He has, again, taken $34.5 million in the fourth quarter, dwarfing everyone else running, whether they be taking super PAC money or not, whether it be in a wine cave or in a wine bar, uh, who knows. Um, so the overall idea, this idea itself that, hey, we need to focus locally in the primary and then work on getting billionaires and millionaires involved in general, that concept itself seems to be breaking down and Sanders is leading the way on that. And the idea that Democrats usually have is, okay, get the grassroots supporters now and then get the money people later, but also get the money people now. And Sanders is showing, again, that's not necessary, that you can actually win by showing value in the people, the regular people, and giving them actually more onus and trusting them to get you the rest of the way versus paying or having being paid by someone else. Uh, so I was watching um, a little sort of podcast conversation that uh, Jacobin put together recently with Crystal Ball on the panel and Michael Brooks on the panel. And I'm sorry, I cannot remember the name of the Jacobin uh, writer that was on the panel with them, but they all had a lot of really interesting things to say and were essentially very, um, for lack of a better phrase, very bullish on the Bernie campaign uh, and talked a lot about how uh, the Bernie campaign is proving over and over again sort of an undeniability about its principles and about the way it's operating. And it itself is this left populism that is a, a pretty adequate response to this sort of, you know, right populism that you get in a Donald Trump. Uh, and a lot of the pushback onto the Bernie campaign has come from Democratic Party insiders, establishment centrist folks. And the strategy this time around has been different than it was in 2015, 2016, in that I think there's a lot of recognition that he is strengthened by direct attacks at his campaign. So they've opted for basically just ignoring him as much as possible. Uh, and it's nice to see just in the last week or so, a lot of these uh, pundits that are, are now saying things like, oh, I knew all along their campaign was viable, uh, or some that are still like indignantly not aware that, that the Bernie Sanders campaign has a very obvious path forward to victory in the Democratic Party. And we're going to talk about it in a later story, but what the implications are if Bernie Sanders were to win the Democratic mm -hmm. nomination. I think it's I think it's an exciting time for uh, the American left. Yeah, and it, it's so crazy. Like, we were just talking right before the show. There's a lot of things that we know will happen, and we'll talk about that later. But, like, it feels like such a distant memory in, like, the last time that 
people and populism has had this kind of energy. We don't really even know how to define everything or where stuff should go or what power should be distributed. And we were talking like, hey, wouldn't it be nice if businesses had to do co-ops? But then we're like, okay, how does that co-ops power get distributed? It's like, Mm -hmm. I like that we're having these questions because we don't know the answers. And I was talking, I'm not convinced that there is a right answer to this. But if we keep going, Sanders also has said that 99.9% of Sanders donors are not maxed out, meaning they have not given the twenty eight hundred dollar amounts and there are twenty seven hundred and fifty or whatever twenty eight hundred is it twenty eight yeah okay and there are only so many people with that kind of money and they're mainly uh putting it into uh biden and pete's wine caves uh (laughs) and then once they do that they can't give any more so a lot of these campaigns usually what you'll see is they'll front load the campaign with a huge amount of money and then when they finish from that peak they will just slowly trickle down on how much money they can raise. And so that's why when they move to the general, they'll expand that base and say, oh, if you're, I'll sell out to you, I'll sell out to you, I'll sell out to you. But Sanders' model, if you get people to believe in you, and Americans are so cynical for all the right reasons, but if you get people to believe in you and believe that you're going to follow through, having a million people monthly paying Two fifty five dollars. I know. I gave I gave money to Sanders uh, right before the years, and I gave him two seventy because I don't have a lot of money. And um, but I know when they when that was being when I filling that out, they were really heavy on. Hey, why don't you make this a monthly donation? Hey, why don't you make mm-hmm. this a weekly donation? I mean, it's only two seventy. Why not? Why not do it a whole lot more? And Sanders is very much pushing our Patreon model. I mean, it very much or an NPR model of give a little now, but keep giving. We if we rely on that money, that's really big. So, yeah, Sanders proving the way all the way through. And uh, what you will see is a lot of people, like Paul said, that. In the beginning of the campaigns, you will find copious amounts of videos of saying Sanders can't win. He's a joke. Ha ha ha. He makes my skin crawl. He's not a real Democrat. He's not a real candidate. Are all of a sudden going to start going, oh, yeah, no, I always believed in him. Because the other part that goes with the money is the money, the way that Sanders is looking at it is if I make something good and powerful that people can believe in, the money is going to be a natural consequence. Whereas what most candidates are thinking is, man, I could really use some money to do what my don to augment what my donors already want. Yeah, I mean, I think the we've covered a lot of the big takeaways for the Bernie campaign already anyway. Um, But I think at this point, uh, I think I'm I'm particularly enjoying that sort of mainstream media realization of like oh he can make he's oh he's and, a, he's a viable candidate. And here's the thing that a lot of people are like yeah, like there's a lot of people that are fatalist that are like this will never work. He'll something will happen and it's like no, bigger army diplomacy. Always remember bigger army diplomacy. If you are strong enough, the opposition doesn't matter. It's very much like saying oh you can't breach a medieval castle even if you have modern guns and tanks and aircraft carriers and um you know attack helicopters that's no it's like no if it will breach if there is enough people there it's how it always works democracy just packages it differently it's in a very very real sense no different from war it's one side has a as a group of people that are acting to defeat the other side and one side might have institutional advantages yeah of course no duh We've known that for a while. We even talk in Chicago, you really have to win 60% of the vote Mm -hmm. to win 51% of the vote for that very reason. But it's not insurmountable and it's not helpful to think that it is. Yeah, I think uh, that's the big thing that kind of gets me. I I scratch my head a little bit and I'm not sure how I feel about it. We talked about it in a positive light today, that kind of the small dollar donation, right? The so. It's great that um, Bernie's not taking money from big companies, uh, super PACs, political action committees, bundlers, things like that. Um, At the same time, it it reminds me a little bit of like a GoFundMe for like medical reasons or Patreon for creators. Like we're we're sort of in this situation where like there is class war that's going on Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been going on for a long time. And we just keep being told that the, the instigators of this class war are the poor, the disaffected, the people who have no voice in government, that they're the perpetrators of it. 
uh, when in reality, it, it's uh, it's mar large multinational corporations who are involved in stock buybacks and facilitating money for government bailouts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like it's really frustrating to have that built in financial uh, imbalance. Mm. Right. Uh, and it's frustrating to have to be like, well, let's go out to all of the people who don't really have extra money to spare and see if we can get hopefully $30, $40 over the course of the campaign from folks, yeah. which is not a crazy amount of money. You know, it's a cup of coffee every every month or whatever. But uh, boy, that's that's a that's a hard sell when it's like, yeah, the, the bundler that has hundreds of millions of dollars maxed out his twenty eight hundred dollar annual, you know, FCC contribution. And it was like a drop in the bucket. It was like a bus ticket for that person. And so, so, but on that note, like, again, there's other ways. It's not just what I've been also saying. It's not just about the donations. Like, so, yeah, if, you know, you have to get a thousand people giving 280 to equal one person giving 2,800, but it also keeps the campaign more responsible to the more people. But at the same time, the value of volunteers in this entire process and people just like, hey, I really like person X, I really like Bernie, I really like Tulsi, let me go tell people about him versus like a Biden, I, I mean, he's he's going to win because I've heard he's going to win. That's enormous. That's, that's if again, you can, you can directly call that monetization. Like if I was to say, how much is a volunteer who someone, maybe they're unemployed, maybe something else, and they can give up half a year time to five days a week, spend three or four hours a day, if you were to convert that into paying, I don't know, $15 an hour for that kind of service, that's real money. One person working a full year as a volunteer is literally worth 10 of those people maxed out, which is maybe about $30,000 in value to a campaign. So there's a conversion to this, that if you volunteer, if you get the word out, if, you know, if you're one person, Bernie has, and I, I said previously on the show, and I was incorrect about that, he has over 2 million people, he has 1.8, uh, donors if bernie let's just say he has two because the math is a little easier if those two million donors can each convert four additional people that's 10 million voters and in a democratic primary turnout that can be enough to win on its own so it's about what it really comes down to all this money spent all that they do when they buy commercials is try and convince you to vote for them and if Bernie can do that without money, with volunteers, with enthusiasm, he doesn't need the money as much, even though he's getting more than just about anyone else. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is I was watching the Bernie rally in Iowa earlier today, and he mentioned that they are planning to, I'm going to get this number wrong. I feel like he said that they were planning on being able to knock on 500,000 doors by the end of the month. Is that right? Or is it 100,000 doors? It's going I don't know. It was a big number of doors. Like There was a lot of knocking that he was uh, insinuating <laughs> would be going on. And that's, I mean, that's the, the thing is he not only wins on small dollar don donors, to your point, he's winning on volunteers, which is even more yeah, worthwhile. I mean, literally, if you volunteer for one hour and you knock on 100 doors in that hour, and I've done a lot of door-to-door, -door, Paul's done door-to-door -door knocking. If you knock on 100 doors... And maybe, and you obviously don't, no one always answers, so maybe 50 people answer. Or let's even say, yeah, 50 people, just go with an easy number. And maybe 10 of those people have not decided. If you can get one person, two people to go with your candidate, and even then if they decide to volunteer, which maybe one in 10 of them decides to spend money and maybe one in 50 of them volunteers, that's, I mean, like, Billionaires like Michael Bloomberg is probably spending like two or three hundred dollars in television ad to get that exact same thing. So 